Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video we're going to look at my plans for Game Week 38 and have a look at the Midnight Mule FPL League for Game Week 37. Top scorer in the Midnight Mule FPL Mini League for Game Week 37 was Theo Hollingworth with It's Too Easy. Now I know it really says it's too easy, but easy is obviously how it's supposed to be said. With a massive 92 points and that was without playing any chips so that's pretty good. So we had Fernandez as captain for 22, Ferguson for 14, Foden for 12, Trippier for 9, Martial for 8, Mitoma for 7, Haaland for 6 and Salah and Steele for 5. And I think when I looked there were two transfers made this week and that was Foden who got 12 and Martial who got 8. So they were very good transfers. And on the bench we had Eze, namesake, for 5, Canate for 1 and Renan Lodi for 6. But... As he couldn't have played instead of anyone else because five was the lowest score that he had for an outfield player anyway. So he, he did really well. And nobody would have thought to play Renan Lodi instead of Stones, Trippier or Trent. So very, very good score, I'd say. Top of the league is still Jacob Eriksson, Skogs Galanton IF with 79 points. But he's only 14 points ahead of second place. So um, the league isn't won yet. We need to see what happens with that one. His team was Captain Harlan for 12, Foden for 12, Shaw for 10, Trippier for 9, Kane for 7, Matoma for 7, McAllister for 6 and Steele for 5. And on the bench, Botman for 8, but he was playing Trippier. It's perfectly reasonable having Botman on the bench, I'd say. There I am, 104th in my own league. 71 points I got. Let's see, I had Harlan for 12, Fernandez for 11, De Gea for 10, and Seiko for 8, that was the only transfer I made. Matoma and Rashford got 7, McAllister 6 and Salah 5. And if you look at my defenders, they got 1, 3 and 1 with Stones and Nakanji having double game weeks in theory. The first game, Man City did keep a clean sheet, but Akanji came off on about 57 minutes and Stones came on. So I think the game's a bit broken there because between them they did get a clean sheet. And I know someone who had Walker... And they got the clean sheet, but I kind of had as much of a clean sheet as then. So maybe they should change it so that like every 20 minutes you play, if it's a clean sheet, then you get the clean sheet. At least that'd be something. But I'm not bitter, not really. And then on my bench, I had my three Newcastle boys with Trippier on nine and Botman on eight. So I obviously was tempted to play Trippier, but in the end, I was silly enough to play my Man City boys. <laughs> Man City players have been... Um, Frustrating is too strong a word. They've been a bit trying though this season. I think I will probably avoid Man City players a bit more next year apart from maybe Haaland. But anyway, so that's me. 71 points. Game week rank just inside the 1.2 million. Overall 2,334 points. A little green arrow. I've only had little arrows one way or the other the last few weeks. 23 points in front of 1 million. That's where I am just now. Now, when I started this season, I obviously expected and hoped to finish much higher than I am going to finish. But a massive advantage that I didn't even think of with being quite low in the league, at least low by what I'd expect, is I'm a lot more relaxed about it. The last few seasons where I would have won my work mini league, it came down to the last game week of the season. And it was really quite scary and tense. But now that I can win nothing, it doesn't matter. So I'm hoping to finish in front of the first million. And I've got 23 points to play with. So if I want to make lots of subs and take hits, I can. Because there's still a fair chance I can finish in front of the million. So there we go. So wherever you are, if you're at two and a half million, maybe try and finish in front of the three million. And then feel okay about taking hits. 677 subscribers. Thank you very much. That's a lot more than I would have expected when I started at the beginning of this year. And if you like and comment as well, all that stuff. Thank you very much. And the biggest thing, of course, is actually watching the videos. FPL Game Week. So FPL Game Week have got a content creator's website and the top content creator is currently FPL Harry. He's on 2,625 and he's surely got the league sewn up for the content creators. Someone else I follow is Ben. He's in third, Ben Krellin. And then Ross, FPL Raptor. A lot of you be aware of him watching his videos. He's down in fourth place. So he's having an amazing season for him, I think. We expect Harry to do well. Harry always has a good season. And Ben normally does quite well as well. 
I am all the way down on second page. There I am, down in 56, which is now two places behind Oscar FPL Focal and one behind James and Planet FPL. Back in game week 34, I made eight transfers. I had to pay for six of them because I had two free transfers and that cost me 24 points. Now I'm fine taking hits. And I said, look, let's track it between now and the end of the season and see how these eight players do to see if it was worth it or not. Because a lot of content creators make a big thing about taking hits. And I'm like, meh, doesn't matter. So this week, game week 37, Raya to Edison was a minus four. That's because Raya got four points and Edison didn't play. Kepa to De Gea was worth seven points. Henry to Robertson was worth one. Castagna to Stone was a minus three because Castagna got six and Stones got three. Odegaard to McAllister was worth four. Martinelli to Rashford was worth seven. Jesus Solanke, no difference there. Darwin to Isaac was worth one point. So the eight players I brought in in game week 37 scored 13 points more than the eight I took out. So in total, the eight players I've brought in have so far scored 44 points more than the ones I took out. It cost me 24 so with one week to go, those transfers are on a plus 20. Now, admittedly, some of these would have been on the bench and some of these I might have since sold, but that's not the point of tracking this. The point of tracking this is to show that earlier in the season, especially the first few game weeks, it's fine to take hits if you think you're going to be getting the points back. So my transfer plans for game week 38, we may get some news near to the deadline that affects what I'm about to show you, but as things stand... I'm expecting to sell Stones and buy Castagna. I'm going to sell Isaac and buy Vardy. So in the FPL game itself, you have to choose a Premiership team. And the only team that I've seen more than once or twice, I think, in the Premiership at the moment is in fact Leicester, because I used to live just outside Leicester. So I went to Filbert Street a few times. Of course, it's now Walker Stadium. It's not even Walker Stadium. It's King Power Stadium now, isn't it? But it was Filbert Street when I used to go. That was a different ground. This might be the last time Vardy ever plays in the Premiership. They've got a reasonably good chance of getting relegated. So I think it's only fair that I bring in a couple of Leicester players. Now, if Haaland isn't starting, I may sell Haaland and get Vardy. If Salah's not starting or Fernandez isn't starting, I may sell one of those and then bring in Madison and or Barnes. So I do intend to bring in two or three Leicester players. Currently thinking these two, but the actual personnel may change slightly. Regarding the captaincy, I have Haaland, I have Salah, I have Fernandez, I have Rashford. They're all very good players. So, of course, the old mule hat is going to go on Jamie Vardy. Who else? Why, why would you... Game week 38, why would you put anyone else as your captain than Vardy? And the vice captain would be Castagna. So he gets the wee mule bonnet. So my team, as it looks, I have not made the transfers yet. So I'm using Fancy Football Hub to show this team. And I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get any kickback or not even a packet of peanut m ms which I quite like. So I've got Vardy as captain with Castagna. And then I've got Haaland up front. He's now my only Man City player. Man United at home to Fulham. I've got De Gea, Rashford and Fernandez. And I've got Trent and Salah away to Southampton. I've got Matoma and Enseco away to Villa. And I've got Trippier away to Chelsea. And on my bench, not necessarily in this order, I've got Forster, Botman, McAllister and Akanji. That's my current plans for how my team would look. And that's it. One game week to go and it's, this is it. This time tomorrow, uh, the game should have started and I'll be in London. There's an FPL meets there. So if you happen to be at the FPL meets in London tomorrow, please make sure you come and say hello. Because I've got no idea if anyone who's going to be there actually watches these videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a really good time Game Week 38 and remember it's okay to make lots of subs if if you're not about to win your mini league it's better to have some fun I think. Thanks, bye. <laughs>